basically last uh, November, December, approximately this time last year. They put a public hearing notice in the Hartford Current, which I'm sure all of you read very carefully, saying that they would have a public hearing on water rates. Uh, it had the big increase in it. Nobody showed up, so therefore there were no complaints, and they uh, passed uh, the rate increase that uh, Matt and myself and some of you started getting all sorts of calls uh, last January saying, how come my water bill is going to be $400 more this year uh, than last year? The public hearing that was held uh, last week, a very different outcome, I would guess, uh, 200 plus people there, uh, the variety of state representatives uh, spoke. Uh, I was very happy that all 200 people didn't speak because after, it's like most public hearings, after you get through the first 10 or 15 people, uh, it starts repeating. But the, the theme was, uh, by everyone, was that we had no representation on the board. Uh, this was a very unfair increase and uh, much too fast. Uh, Fred just gave me the list of what they voted on, and uh, I will say it's dropping now from $105.75 a quarter to $49.74 a quarter for the uh, non-member fee. Uh, it's definitely a uh, much more reasonable uh, charge for what they're trying to accomplish. I do have to sympathize with the MDC. They have some tremendous expenses that they're going to have to face, along with Connecticut Water Company and the rest of the water companies. Water lines have a useful life of approximately 100 years, which sounds like a very, very long time until you think about how many water lines were put in Connecticut starting in, at the end of World War II through the 1950s. They are now all 50, 60 years old, similar to our schools. If you have a lifespan of an average of 100 years, at about 60 or 70 years, some of them are going to start to fail. And they are incredibly expensive, obviously, to repair. Same was when we had to repair the sewer over on Chapel Road. A lot more expensive to repair than to put them in. That, along with the Clean Water Act and what they're required to do and what not to required to do, the cost of the public utilities will be a lot greater. The one thing that I did talk to the commissioners afterwards, and I think they uh, will probably do something uh, legislatively on, is there's a 28-member board that runs the MDC. Currently, there are no non-member towns sitting on that board. And what uh, legislation I will probably be putting forward is to do a variety of things. Either have the uh, board increased by a couple of members for non-member towns, or maybe even more simply, the governor gets a certain number of appointments. I'll restrict the governor that two of his appointments have to be to non-member town citizens. Uh, the reason I come up with two, uh, that comes out proportionate to the uh, member towns as far as the total number of people. Uh, will a uh, 26 to 2 vote uh, not be able to overcome? Obviously. My feeling is it's just like with any other minority representation that's sitting on a board or a committee. It's a lot harder to do something if you've got somebody sitting across the table, even if it's one or two people that are looking at you and saying, do you know what you're doing to a certain group of individuals? And I think that would uh, probably uh, be one of the solutions to it. Uh, I'm supposed to be meeting with the MDC, I'm sure, on a regular basis between now and February when legislation will have to be put forward. As far as the actual working of the legislation, uh, I'm looking forward to the public hearing because while I'll be putting forward some legislation, it'll be in general terms because it's just similar to what you're doing here is that the concept can be very easy, the details can be very difficult, and unfortunately when the legislature does something, it's in law and it's very difficult to come back and change it afterwards. So for that reason that I think the public hearings and the influence we get or the input we get at that time will have a very, very major impact on what legislation will actually have come forward. So uh, I know uh, Liz was there, Fred was there, uh, probably another dozen citizens from South Windsor were out speaking, and it obviously had the impact of reducing the, uh, the charge that they had uh, originally done. Uh, one of the ones, Matt, that I would have you look at, uh, which may or may not impact us, and it's not in the list that Fred just gave me, so I don't know if they revised it, uh, from a zero cost 
to a $15,000 cost for moving a fire hydrant. Um, I don't know how many roads we have widened or driveways we've had to put in, but it's a cost that we've never had to affect before. And the one I noticed was like driving in here to the town hall, and we have a fire hydrant right by the library, and I'm going, well, normally we would say if we wanted to put in another handicapped parking spot, it's going to cost a couple thousand dollars, let's move the fire hydrant and do it. Uh, I don't think that's an MDC fire hydrant, but it was one of the ones that, just give you an example of how this can be a very costly thing when you're saying, well, what's the big deal? Uh, it can be. Uh, you have a developer or a homeowner that wants to widen their driveway, and you say, yes, sure, go ahead and widen your driveway and write a check to the MDC for lots of money. Uh, so it is one of the things I think you should uh, take another look at. Thank, thank you, Representative Amon, for your leadership, because actually you spoke uh, passionately to, on behalf of the South Windsor residents. And I think uh, the leadership that has been shown by you and, and Liz Pendleton, as well as Fred Shaw and, and, and the manager, have had an impact on this uh, improvement that we have seen. So we have seen results right away. So thank you for that. I, I have to give uh, credit to uh, Steve Cassano, the uh, ex-mayor of Manchester and also the senator from that area. Uh, he is the chairman of the same committee that I'm ranking member on. And uh, he said, that as he walked up, he said, Bill, come up. we got to stand next to each other. And that sends a very clear message uh, to uh, the MDC when you have the committee that oversees you, you have the Republican leader and the Democrat leader standing next to each other saying we got a problem. Uh, they definitely were listening. 